So today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the hydroponic system that I'm doing currently here. Um, my neighbor Jim down the street um, had asked me why I didn't do um, many hydroponic videos. Well, most of us aren't doing hydroponics and most of us will do a raised bed or right directly into our garden bed area or sometimes even in our pots. And so I didn't want to do too many videos on hydroponics, but um, since he asked, um, I'll kind of give you a brief overview of how this hydroponic system works. So currently right now I have a, a number of plants that I started from seed. And whether you start from seed or you start uh, with um, uh, seedlings that were already bought, let's say over at Home Depot or Lowe's, and uh, whether you do that, uh, you can go ahead and put them into your hydroponic system. Now because I grew mine from seed, a lot of times I'll grow mine in rock wool or directly into perlite like this one right here and so this one was started in a rock wool tube and then I went ahead and put it in a perlite cup once it grew bigger but whether you use uh, rock wool or perlite um, and cubes you still can go ahead and transplant them into your final resting place your hydroponic larger cooler and so there that is the cooler that I use uh, I bought these coolers over at um, Walmart for a couple bucks and then I took a couple kitchen bags and um, insert them in the inside of that um, for whatever reason we've been able to invent many things and improve upon many things but for whatever reason we seem to can't can't seem to invent uh, styrofoam that doesn't leak and so I have to go ahead and insulate it uh, by putting a couple plastic bags in there so that way the water doesn't um, leak out through the pores of the styrofoam <clears throat> so getting back into the system, what I do is once I start the plants, I let them grow until they're a decent size. So those are just the uh, Genovasi basil and it's only showing its first set of leaves. And so I'll wait until it gets their minimum, their second or third set of leaves before I do any sort of transplanting into another container. So what happens um, is with this tomato plant, I started from seed from a rock wool cube. And then from there, once it showed its second set or third set of true leaves, then I put them into a mid-size container, like either a K, uh, K cup here on the left, or I just put used a uh, pop can here on the right. And once it uh, forms its uh, third and fourth and fifth set of leaves, um, I'll go ahead at some point, uh, move them into their final resting home, which is the, um, the styrofoam cooler which will be the final resting place and it'll be in there for the duration of the growing period. Now once I've already set up my plants and they're done growing, I've gone ahead and got my coolers insulated, used the plastic. Then what I'll do is um, I'll use the lids and I'll drizzle, drill some holes on top. And I usually for tomatoes, I usually put four tomatoes per container. So if I'm going ahead and using the smaller half inch uh, Rockwell cubes like I did with this one um, I only need to use a hole saw that is smaller I think this one is a 7 8 inch hole saw and that hole will be big enough on the lid uh, to fit inside there now with the uh, tomato plant I know there's a lot more roots in this one um, as you can see there's a lot of roots there it's probably a little bit of root bound inside of there and so from past experience I know that I'm going to go ahead and use a bigger hole saw so this one is a one and three fourths inch uh, hole saw and so I'll drill four holes on top of the lid of this cooler and I'll place the four tomato plants now I start off with water tap water but what I do is I let it at least aerate for at least a full day because there's a lot of chemicals that are added into our tap water to make it safe for us to drink and I don't want that in our plant-based wa water solution so what I do is I'll go ahead and I filled up these buckets full of water and I'll let it aerate for a full day at a minimum now once I'm done aerating it for at least one full day then I'll go ahead and mix my solution for every five gallon bucket or five gallons of water, I'll use from left to right, I'll use master blend, Epsom salt, and calcium nitrate. Now there is some, such a thing as called nutri nutrient lock, which means if you dump all three of your ingredients or 
do it in the incorrect order. It locks out the nutrients and it doesn't actually work for your plants. So you got to mix it in the right order. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two teaspoons of master blend, mix that in, in some water, and then you're going to go ahead and add one teaspoon of Epsom salt and then two teaspoons of calcium nitrate. So what I do is I start off with the master blend and I make sure that once I put it into the bucket, I go ahead and stir it very well until it completely dissolves. Once that's done, then I add the one teaspoon of Epsom salt. And then once I've stirred that, dissolved it all, then I'll go ahead and add the final two tablespoons of calcium nitrate. Then my solution is ready. Now, the only thing that I change in the middle of the growing season is for tomatoes and peppers. Once my tomatoes start forming, it's flowered, it's been pollinated, the fruit is starting to show, in order to make sure that I minimize or eliminate uh, blossom end rot, I'll go ahead and I'll add CalMag um, solution into my five gallon bucket at the uh, described uh, listed amount. And I think I did a video earlier on that, so go ahead and watch that. And I just add that into the bucket that I'm using to water my tomato plants and my pepper plants. And so that's a little bit about the hydroponic system. Once it's set up, once everything's done, it kind of takes care of itself. I like the fact that my plants grow nice and healthy. I don't have to worry about watering it every day because there's a reservoir of water in there. Uh, I don't have any dirt which eliminates a lot of the bugs that are getting into the dirt in the soil and also uh, reduces and cuts down on the diseases and bugs that are floating around and landing on the dirt. And so that's kind of why I do a lot of the hydroponics. But um, what I'll do is um, as the season goes on, I have to do some basic maintenance um, on my hydroponic systems. And as the plants are starting to grow later this year, what I'll do is I'll do a more detailed um, explanation of my hydroponic systems and I also try to explain a little bit when I'm doing my bi-weekly walkthroughs. So that's a little bit about Hydroponics 101 and if you have any questions just uh, shoot me a message.